legendary status. Hey everyone, so welcome to the second chapter of this legendary musician, Simon Chimbetu. In part one, we said he was born in 1955. He had eight albums recording with his brother as a group called the Marxist Brothers. And he had 13 solo albums from 1990 to 2005. So, in part one, we also spoke about how Simon Chimbetu trained with the guerrillas in Tanzania during the Liberation War. And this was the reason why most of his music was politically conscious. Now, we're going to speak about some of these songs and starting with Kuipa Chete. In the song Kuipa Chete, he paints a picture of a sad situation as a black man in Zimbabwe who is being used as cheap labor by white farmers. He says, Ndikanzi chera, ndino chera. Nikanzi tema, ndino tema, nichungo daro makore ne makore. Achizu tengera mombe, moto kare ne matrakta. Kuipa chete kumeso ne kutinda chembera ne urombo. Pamunda uya we murungu na shanda kwe makore. What this means is, the white people make us dig year after year, working hard year after year. In the meantime, they are buying themselves cars, cows and nice tractors. It looks like I'm old and ugly, but it's only because I'm being raised in poverty because of the white people holding on to the farms. His critical lyrics continue on with other songs like Simbane Derere and another song called Southern Africa, which is saying that this part of the world belongs to black people. His lyrics actually say, Inyika Yewa Tema. Now, his albums, Survival and Lullaby, were highly critical of the Mugabe regime. After this, his career somewhat declined because he was now directly linked to ZANU-PF. As the economic situation in Zimbabwe worsened with the controversial land reform, the musicians who were seen to be siding with this land reform program and the general ZANU-PF policies were starting to become unpopular. So this explains why his album Hoko was somewhat unpopular because it was very highly political. Here, he has a song called Pane Asipo. Pane Asipo means someone is not here or someone is missing. This someone that Simon Chimbeto is talking about are people who died in the war and were left in the jungles. So his lyrics, Makumbira kuzunzarake ere kutitembira emana uyu. What he is trying to say is, some people died in the war but were never honored or actually received a proper burial. He continues on to say, Unganyo ramaita iri, panevamu wa sipo, tataza kukanganwa isu, kukanganwa takoniwa. What he is trying to say is, some of us cannot forget. Those people who went to war cannot forget those guys who died. At this point, some people deserted him. However, many still liked his music. So it is important to understand that, although the land reform program was chaotic in Zimbabwe, many of the people in Zimbabwe acknowledged the need to repossess the land. So this majority group of adult Zimbabweans partly appreciated the content of Chimbetu's political songs. And actually, even before the controversial land reform program, Simon Chimbetu is known to have represented the black people of Zimbabwe in highly political songs like Zuaraenda. And this is from the album Survival. In Zuaraenda, Simon Chimbetu laments the delay in redistributing the land back to the black people. What he says in this song is, Rongai wakoma zuaraenda, wakoma gowaiminda, ngowaiaenda. What this means is, please redistribute the land because time is running out. And because of this, many Zimbabweans positively identified with such songs. These are just a few examples of how Chimbetu's songs were highly political and very controversial. Considering the time period in Zimbabwe, musicians with such controversial songs were not hard to find, but the truth is there were not too many who were anywhere near as talented as Simon Chimbetu was. So after he sustained some injuries in a car accident, Simon Chimbetu died on 14 August 2005, leaving a legacy that will last forever in Zimbabwe. And rightfully so, he was declared a provincial hero. Thank you guys for listening and I'll talk to you soon.